The King and Queen of the Ring tournaments kicked off on Monday night with two fantastic matches on the men's side, with Gunther beating Sheamus again, and Ilya Dragunov defeating Ricochet in a match that honestly I think was even better than the Gunther match. Tomorrow night, Gunther meets Kofi Kingston or Rey Mysterio, who are going to be wrestling each other tonight at the live event in Macon, Georgia. And Dragunov takes on Jay Uso, who subbed for the injured Drew McIntyre in a win over Finn Balor. McIntyre, he was on the show, but he was not medically cleared. Still has the hyperextended elbow from WrestleMania. And boy, did he shoot Jay a death stare after Uso won his match. So I think McIntyre may end up costing him his match tomorrow night, which would then give us, if that happens, it would then give us Dragunov against most likely Gunther in the semifinals. I am actively trying to will that match into existence just by, by speaking it. Hopefully I'm willing it into existence. Dragunov in one night on Monday got himself over to a whole new audience. The comments that I saw on social media, it was actually very, it was very uh, cool to see from people who had never watched him in NXT. And they didn't know from him. They didn't know what his style was. They didn't know what the big deal was about him. And it was very cool to see how many people were sold on him after just one match with Ricochet on Monday night. Imagine what they will think if they see him in there with Gunther next week. I have no problem with them doing the match this soon if they do it. There's going to be many more opportunities for the two of them to dance. And a dragon of loss is not going to hurt him in the slightest. I, I would actually argue, if anything, him going in there and hanging... You know, move for move, chop for chop with Gunther and then losing a, a close fight is only going to help him. It's not going to hurt him at all. Uh, I cannot see Dragunov winning if the winner of the tournament, though, gets to challenge for the world championship, which we don't know because they still haven't told us. But if that is, in fact, the reward, I just it would just be way too soon for that. And then Jey Uso, if he were to move on, he just challenged for the title last weekend. I don't want to see him in the finals. Also tomorrow night, Lyra Valkyria and Zoe Stark, they go at it after they both advance to the next round. And Io Sky will take on the winner of the Shayna baszler Zelina Vega match, which is also taking place at the show in Macon, Georgia tonight. I think saving some matches for house shows is cool. It makes them more special, you know, given that the stakes are a spot in the next round on TV. I just don't understand why they didn't bother announcing which shows each of these matches are actually going to be on. Now, I think they did on the SmackDown Lowdown show on Peacock yesterday, but they damn sure didn't on TV this week. They didn't give any details at all about any of the shows this weekend. So, I mean, if, if the goal was to try to move some more tickets, and I know selling tickets is not too hard for them these days, but you would think, you know, if you're going to use that maybe to move a few more tickets, you would mention where the cities are <laughs> going to be that you know, the shows are taking place at. Uh, I also think that they should post the matches to their YouTube channel after. I think you know they've got like 100 million subscribers on there. I would get those matches up on YouTube as exclusives because I'm sure they're going to be filmed anyway. Uh, Kofi Kingston against Rey Mysterio, that's a match I would watch. So on the Raw side, I think we're looking at Gunther going to the finals in the King of the Ring. And I think we're looking at EO Sky going to the finals in the Queen of the Ring. Which brings me to SmackDown. In the Queen of the Ring on Friday night, Nia Jax beat Naomi to advance. Nia will now meet Jade Cargill in the next round after Jade's win over Piper Niven. Bianca Belair beat Candice LeRae and will now meet Tiffany Stratton this Friday after Tiffany's win over Meechin last night at the live event in Chattanooga, which gives us Jade against Nia and Bianca against Tiffany. This side of the bracket is actually pretty fascinating to me because it can go any number of ways. Now, coming into this, I had Nia Jax as my pick to win the crown. But since I've got Io going to the finals on the Raw side, I think we need a babyface on the SmackDown side. I don't think they're going to give us Bianca against Jade. Not yet. Not, you don't want to do that yet. It's too, it's too soon for that. What I laid out on Friday night on the... SmackDown review was Nia advances over Jade after uh, some shenanigans. Bianca beats Tiffany, who I would save for money in the bank. I wouldn't even have Tiffany win this. I would give her the briefcase. 
Bianca then beats Nia and goes on to the finals against Io. And Bianca Belair wins Queen of the Ring. Because if the winner gets a women's championship match, and I know that her and Jade are already the women's tag team champions, but that doesn't mean anything. If the winner does get a women's title match, they have already, on television, they have already teased bad blood between Bailey and Bianca. Mo- mostly from Bianca's side. Bianca has not forgiven Bailey or damage control for the hell they put her through for the last two years. And so they have illustrated that in these backstage segments that Bianca is not fond of Bailey. It is already heat there. But it's hard for me to see Jade losing to someone just yet. Even with shenanigans and, and all that. So maybe Jade and Nia, here, here's what kind of is going on in my head now. Maybe Jade and Nia both lose, and we get like a double countout or a double DQ. Tiffany beats Bianca, who was teasing a knee injury at the end of her match with Candice on Friday. Uh, and maybe she beats her with an assist from Nia Jax as revenge for Jade, screwing her out of a win. She costs her partner her match. Tiffany then gets a bye to the finals, which would be against Io. So that way, Nia has beef with the tag team champions, and for Clash at the Castle, I could see Nia and a partner, maybe Tiffany, challenging Bianca and Jade for the tag team titles. So I I really don't know what they're going to do. I look at this and think that this is the most unpredictable side of the bracket, and I like that. I like the fact that it's, it's hard for me to sit here and predict exactly how it's going to play out. But those are the scenarios that kind of I have on the brain right now as far as that side goes. Now, in the King of the Ring, we had Randy Orton beating AJ Styles on Friday, Carmelo Hayes beating Baron Corbin, Tama Tonga beating Angelo Dawkins of the Street Profits, who filled in for Bobby Lashley, who they claimed got injured in training. And last night in Chattanooga, LA Knight picked up a win over Santos Escobar. So that gives us Orton against Hayes in the next round, and LA Knight against Tama Tonga. It's either Orton or L.A. Knight in the finals against Gunther. I think we're looking at Randy Orton against Gunther. And the reason why I point out to you Randy Orton's knee. I thought Orton did a masterful job of selling the knee on Friday when A.J. went on the attack. And I think the knee was the focus for a reason. When Gunther beat Sheamus on Monday night, he did so with a half crab. Uh, This was after Ludwig Kaiser attacked Sheamus' knee. The referee ejected Kaiser, but the damage was done. Gunther targeted the knee. He got Sheamus to tap out. I think they're getting the half crab over for a reason. I think they're getting it over because he's going to beat Randy Orton with it in the finals. This, this is my theory. You know, now Orton has to get through Hayes, and then he has to get through Tamatanga. But in doing so, the knee gets even worse. The bloodline goes after it. Orton is not 100% going into the finals. But the story is there. They told it in a backstage segment on Friday. Winning King of the Ring is the one thing in his career that Randy Orton has never done. He has done everything else that you could possibly do. He has held every title, every major championship you could hold. Singles, tag, he's done it all. He's won the Royal Rumble multiple times. He's headlined WrestleMania. But he has never been King of the Ring. But with the knee, it becomes just too much to overcome, and we get King Gunther. But, you know, when I look at the brackets and both sides, I think you want to have one winner from Raw, and I think you want the other winner. So so if you're going to have the men's winner is going to be from Raw, I think the winner of the Queen of the Ring should be from SmackDown. I think you want to have one of each. 